this is a response to Vamit Coyote's video on uh, religion and does it exist. I think I happen to agree with you. I mean, let's face it, with sensory stimuli, you can get most people to accept certain conditions of their reality. With certain logical teachings and an absence of critical thinking, you can usually get individuals to accept certain precepts and ideas about their reality. That's not hard. It's getting people to accept certain interpretations of somewhat ambiguous facts, kept ambiguous because you might need to reinterpret them in order to get people to react differently to them later on. That's where it gets tricky. Now, I'm actually going to Oh, you're going to hate me once I'm done with this video. You don't you worry about that. There's going to be some hate. I'm going to take the direct, redirect this entire question. What kind of sick mind would create a dogmatic faith? No, religion. Faith is a little different. A complete dogmatic religion perverting both spirituality, which can be done a-religiously, and then insisting that the individual who or committee of individuals who worked on all the ideas that must note that word be obeyed what kind of individual would inflict that on other people who know no better somebody in my opinion, who is fundamentally either contemptuous, distrustful, or both at once of other people. Or somebody who does not like the way they think. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I do come across as a conspiracy theorist a lot of the time. However, I ask you to analyze this from a psychological perspective, all right? Psychological perspective. If I have an individual who says, you must believe whatever I tell you on the day, and I might tell you something different tomorrow, what does that tell you about that individual? Huh? What does it tell you? I'll tell you what it tells me. <laughs> yeah, says the guy is a power-tripping scumbag. It is. I mean, I've, I've known, thank you very much, I have known people of genuine faith uh, and genuine spirituality, real mystics. I mean, mystic actually comes from the same root word as mystery. You try and embrace the mystery of something, the Zen followers say, you dance with nothing. That doesn't mean, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't mean you're not wearing clothes. It just means you're trying to embrace something that you have no, or move with something that you have no chance of understanding. It is no thing. It is no thing you would understand. So, you're trying to move with it. It's very deep stuff, that. I've known genuinely deep people genuinely respectful people, people who feel a connection to other people that can't be, that they've tried to explain using science, rationality, uh, and dependable analysis, and yet the results keep defying those things. They can't explain it. And none of these people, some of them work within religion, yet none of these people have uh, a dogmatic. They're not uh, living, you know, they don't have the color by numbers mentality. And I'm not saying simpler, f well, maybe a little. Uh, they don't have the overly instructionalized view on the world. They're more nebulous than that. And you'll find the people, the sorts of individuals that 
and groups that institute religions. I'm not talking about spirituality here. Those movements are fairly organic. I'm talking about religion as informal. You must do this, do this, do this. This means this, this means this. Can't do that. No, no, no. Okay. The people that institute those sorts of religions can't stand people like that. They relegate them to backwaters. They use them when it might be convenient or they need to put up an aura of uh, mysticism uh, once every so often. Yet the rest of the time, they are more than happy to demonize uh, the people that took some of their ideas and found a genuine mystery in them. Uh, as opposed to just stuff that wasn't explained. There is a difference. And let me tell you. Because people who ex espouse mystery and uh, s genuine spirituality, as I think of it, these people are anathema to a rigid colour-by-numbers religion. Because suddenly the expression changes and the ideas and the interpretations changes. And guess what? If you're trying to use that religion to control people and get them to keep contributing to your liquor fund... Uh, sorry, I mean, passing the collection plate. Guess what? Those people are going to say, well, what does money really give us? I mean, it's just a means for exchange. And we're not really exchanging anything here that has anything to do with the physical. Ah, don't worry about the money. Look, we'll see whether someone can donate some work on your house or whatever. You know. And if you go to any of the TED conferences, uh, there's usually at least one or two speakers every year. Uh, and you can find them all on the website, obviously, that'll uh, deluge you with examples of people organically starting to move towards trading their stuff when they need it, uh, and how people act as groups. And I'm not saying I'm a collectivist either. What I'm saying is that when it comes to certain types of interactions, people will uh, get stuck in there for non-physical reasons, non-material reasons. Uh, when it comes to the physical hardcore stuff, when there's artificial scarcity going on, we're very meticulous, we're very good at planning, uh, we can go under great hardships. That's why I was always impressed by these uh, climate change uh, people. I don't particularly hold to a lot of the theories and I certainly don't believe CO2 is a sole cause. However, when we had to look at our own usage of things and our uh, own impact on things. Human beings are very good at conserving their energy, their time and their effort uh, into the most cost-effective uh, methods of interacting with stuff. It's just that that can easily be confused for a much larger system that we have no impact on. That's really where religion gets its roots. We conserve our interactions and our mannerisms and our words and our feelings, which is fine for people who are trying to not expend resources unnecessarily or trying to maintain a good social platform uh, with others. And that's not a bad thing. However, if you can redirect that into uh, Point, seemingly pointless behaviors that only ultimately give a side benefit to some very distant people to the individuals making those changes in their own personal lives and in a lot of cases sacrifices you can basically have people uh, be manipulated into going without for no good reason while the people get maybe an extra ivory back scratcher and yes I'm taking that from the Simpsons so I think that, yeah, I agree with you. We've, you've pretty much settled that it's not about whether you can get people to believe and agree in certain principles. It's just that the world will break those ideas with practicality and experience. So maybe we should be looking at the kind of people and asking who institute religions and ask, what's wrong with them? Anyway. I'm Ozzy Griffin. Hopefully this has given you some food for, food for thought. And remember, VC, boogity boogity boogity. Amen.